Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to, uh, throughout the entire session to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Texas. We are currently in session B2, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our very first representative from the University of North Texas. Good evening, everyone. I am going to share my screen right quick. Can everyone see that and hear me okay? Sounds good, thanks, Tiffany. Perfect, I will go ahead and get started. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. My name is Tiffany Lipscomb. I am the Associate Director for Admissions at the University of North Texas. Uh, just a little bit about where we are located. We are in Denton, Texas, which is about 30 miles north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We've been named a best small town in America and also a best college town. We also do have a, an additional campus in Frisco, Texas, which is about 30 miles down the road to the east of us. And being located in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex has great opportunities for students, not only for things to do and fun things in the area, um, but also great opportunities for internships and um, jobs when you do graduate from college. And our professors do a really great job about uh, helping you guys uh, learn about internships and get connected to those different opportunities. A little bit of history. We were founded in 1890 above a hardware store on the Denton Square. We have had a few different name changes since then. Um, now, of course, being the University of North Texas. And our colors are green and white. Our official mascot is Scrappy the Eagle. We also do have an unofficial mascot, which is Lucky the Albino Squirrel. Uh, he is actually a live squirrel on campus and legend has it that if you see him on the way to a test, then you will uh, get an A on the test. Mean Green is our athletic nickname as well. Uh, we have several different uh, diverse uh, populations on our campus. You can see a little bit more about our statistics here. Um, we do have about 41 and a half uh, of our, or percent of our students that are first generation students. We have a large honors college and we are classified as a tier one research in uni university by the Carnegie classification. We have just over 42,000 students making us the fourth largest uh, college in the state of Texas. And we do have international student population from about 142 different countries and were recently named a Hispanic serving institution. Uh, as far as academics, we have 109 different bachelor's degrees you can choose from. We also have uh, graduate programs, uh, 94 master's and 36 doctoral degrees. And we have 89 of our academic programs that have been ranked in the nation's top 100. You can see a few of those uh, recognitions there on the screen of some of our outstanding programs. We have a lot to do on campus. I always encourage my students to get involved no matter what it is that you are uh, interested in whether it's an academic group or a social group or community service. You can see we have a lot of different opportunities there. Uh, we also have several different sponsored, university sponsored events that are free for students to get into. I always encourage students to take advantage of those free events when you're in college, especially free food, if that is an opportunity for you. We do have 14 different residence halls and five dining halls on campus. We offer living learning communities if you want to live with other people with similar interests as you. And then in addition to our fantastic dining halls on campus, we do have 
uh, additional retail dining uh, in the student union, and you can get what's called flex dollars added onto your meal plan uh, to go to places like Starbucks, Twitch, Twitch, Chick-fil-A, and more. We are uh, NCAA Division I for athletics. Currently, we are in the Conference USA and actually just uh, were changing over to the ACC for following years. You can see our D1 teams listed there. In addition, we do have uh, intramurals as well as club sports on campus. So there are a lot of different opportunities. And a fun fact is our students get to go to all of our home sporting events for free. We have a lot of different support organizations for students as well, whether that is academic support, uh, well-being and safety, uh, citizenship and global perspectives, or engagement and persistence or career uh, services. You can see all those different opportunities there. I always tell my students, just ask us for help. More than likely, we're going to have a service for you, so make sure that you ask, and it's likely going to be there for you. We'll talk quickly about our admissions process. You do need to apply online, either on Apply Texas or the Common App. Uh, we are test optional, so you can submit an SAT or ACT if you do have that. And then you'll get a login for your student portal once you apply. So you want to make sure that you submit that um, information and get that set up as soon as you can so you can monitor your application. We do have a $75 application fee, and we do accept various uh, fee waivers. If you go to our website, you can learn more about the fee waivers, or I'll put my contact information in later. You can contact me as well. As I mentioned before, we are test optional. You can be admitted based off of class rank and test score, but if you have at least a 3.0 cumulative unweighted GPA, then you'll be admitted regardless of your uh, test score. Um, a little bit more about our timeline. July 1st is when our application opens, and then March 1st is our priority date for submitting your application. Quickly want to show you guys some information on financial aid and scholarships. We have several different opportunities. I uh, particularly like to point out the FAFSA and CAFSA, um, getting those submitted by uh, January 15th, and then also our UNT Excellence Scholarship for incoming fresh, freshman students. Um, quickly, this is a little bit more about our cost of attendance, so you can see that there. And then finally, some information about our different events that you can attend at UNT to get more information about us. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you guys so much. And let me know if you have any questions. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Trinity University. Hi, let me get my screen share set up and ready to go. All right, perfect. And we'll go ahead and dive right on in. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michaela Nip. I use she, her, hers pronouns and I'm an assistant director of admissions at Trinity University. I'm also a proud alumna of the class of 2016 and I'm really excited to present to all of you today. Uh, what I want to unpack in our time together is what I think makes Trinity stand out. And to me, it's really a combination of five things. It's our location, our academics, our size, our resources and the diversity of our student body. So first and foremost, we are a private secular institution located in the heart of San Antonio, Texas, the seventh largest city in the United States. It's definitely challenging to find a school like Trinity near an urban center, and we are right in the middle of it all. We're just five minutes from the airport in one direction and five minutes from downtown in the other. And our students really see the city as their playground to explore, um, but also as a place to grow through service, internships, or even shadowing. And San Antonio also has a really rich history of over 300 years, an incredible cultural vibrancy, and we're a great foodie city. Don't get me started on breakfast tacos. I could talk your ear off about that. We are an undergraduate focused institution of about 2,500 undergraduate students. And at Trinity, you'll learn in small class sizes where you're gonna build genuine connections with faculty. There are nine to one student to faculty ratio and you're getting the opportunity to learn directly from the experts themselves. We also offer robust support services on campus to help our students succeed both in and outside of the classroom. We offer almost 60 majors and over 60 minors. We also have two advising programs for pre-law and health professions. 
we do not have program based admissions. So at Trinity, you have access to all of the academic programs that we offer before you have to declare your major in your sophomore year. We are very much rooted in the liberal arts and offer the breadth and depth of curriculum for our students to explore, but we consider our curriculum to be liberal arts plus since we're also able to offer really robust pre-professional programs such as engineering, our school of business, computer science, education, and communication. And about a third of our students double major, sometimes in very different areas of study. While we may be a small school, we have the resources that you might expect to see at much larger institutions. Um, this slide hasn't been updated just yet, but we actually have a $1.7 billion endowment, which you'll see in a variety of ways during your time at Trinity, from new buildings like our $127 million science facility or our humanities complex that's currently underway, um, even through the amazing faculty that we're able to hire, and of course, through financial aid, and I'll touch on that near the end of the presentation. But we also invest in our students. Over 80% of our students will do research or internships during their time at Trinity, whether it be interning at the San Antonio Spurs or conducting research on bioluminescence. Students also have amazing opportunities to study abroad with one of over 200 programs on six of the seven continents. And our study abroad program is a home pay program, which means a semester abroad costs nothing different than a semester at Trinity. The only additional cost is a plane ticket. And our students can create their own company through our robust entrepreneurship program with the Stumberg competition, where students actually compete in a Shark Tank style competition to earn $25,000 to grow their very own business. Within our 2,500 undergraduate students, we are so proud of the many facets of diversity brought to the table. Our students come from all over the country and from all over the globe. 40% of our students are non white. 13% are first generation college students and 16% are Pell eligible. Our Tigers come from different religious backgrounds, bring different political beliefs to the table and even bring diversity of thought. It's really important to us that our students are part of a community that looks, thinks and behaves like the world they're gonna be entering in four years from diverse backgrounds in terms of geography, religion, thought, race and ethnicity and gender. As you can imagine from hearing about our student body, we have a really vibrant social life, especially as a residential campus. Students do live on campus for three years and are guaranteed housing all four, and students can engage in over 115 clubs and organizations that encompass everything from Dungeons and Dragons Club to Greek life, and you'll find a ton of Tiger pride for our Division III athletics program, which is currently ranked 25th in the NCAA Division III Director's Cup. When it comes to applying to Trinity, we strive to make the process as accessible as possible and remove barriers from the application process. First, there is no application fee to apply to Trinity. We're also on three platforms, as you can see on the screen, so that students can find us on multiple platforms that you might be using. We do a holistic review on all applications, looking at the different pieces of the puzzle, as you see up here, and there are no supplemental essays required. We're also test optional for the 21-22 and the 22-23 application cycles. All students, even those applying test optional, are automatically considered for our merit scholarships. We also offer need-based aid um, to eligible families to complete the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And because of our endowment, we are able to provide both robust merit and need-based aid with the goal to make Trinity as affordable as we can for as many families as we can. This last slide here is just saying that you're able to connect with us following this presentation for either in person or virtual opportunities and you can check out the next steps on our website. But hopefully in our time today you've been able to see how our tigers are a force in motion. I look forward to working with you as you explore Trinity. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me and I'll place my information in the chat. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Any questions at all, our representatives are here to assist. The next representative is from the University of Texas at Arlington. Thank you very much. Um, to do from the beginning, do you see it in slide presentation, yes or no? 
Uh, yes, we can see the first slide. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Lynn Larson. I'm Director of Student Recruitment in the College of Engineering at the University of Texas at Arlington. We understand that we have a very short time with you this evening, so we decided to concentrate on the college I work for, College of Engineering. College of Engineering at UTA Lynn, was established. Lynn, sorry, can you uh, expand it? Just start from the beginning. It's not in full screen mode there. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. That better? Yep, looks great. Thank okay. you. Great. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So the College of Engineering was um, started uh, 61 years ago um, as having just two majors in electrical and mechanical engineering. Because believe it or not, 61 years ago, computer science was very, very, very much not even a blip in anybody's mind. The building you're looking at is the headquarters for our College of Engineering. This is Netterman Hall, where the Dean's Office classrooms are student support services, and two of our eight departments are housed. That would be civil engineering and electrical engineering. So I wanted to point out some of the programs of study that we have available for you in the College of Engineering at UTA. We have bioengineering that has two different tracks at the undergraduate level. One track is what we call the machine track, which would, students would work with, develop, and improve such instruments as thermometers and stethoscopes, MRI machines, and CAT scan machines, anything that a physician or physician's assistant would need to scan the body to find out what's actually going on inside the body, but from the outside. The other track is our tissue track. This is where we work with everything inside the body. We're doing some cancer research, some COVID research. We're doing drug therapy research. What's the fastest way to get a certain pharmaceutical into a patient's body that's going to best help them? So there's different tracks for students interested in bioengineering. Our civil engineering program also has three different tracks, one in civil engineering, a newer track in architectural engineering, and a growing track in construction management. Architectural engineering is different than architecture. Architectural engineering really deals with the students or the professional who reads the architect's drawing and makes it happen. They figure out the supplies that are needed figure out timelines, really determine how best to construct a building or anything else that a architect has designed. The construction management includes information on civil engineering and architectural engineering, but there's also a lot of business. So a construction management person would be the person in charge of the project. So working with the engineers, working with the construction crews, working with the architect, working with the architectural engineer, and pulling everything together. We all know that computer science and engineering is very popular these days. We again have three different tracks within our computer science and engineering department. There's computer engineering, which deals with the hardware that students may be interested in improving or building anew. Computer science, which really has to do with programming, artificial intelligence, uh, cybersecurity and software engineering, creating and improving the software that we have available to us today. Electrical engineering is one of the most um, diverse majors that we have within the College of Engineering. Our engine, electrical engineers work on everything from the power grid, the power grid security, to protons, to lasers, to um, creating power, electrical power and wind power. So electrical engineering is not just working on circuits, but it's a very broad based major that you work in very, with either very, very tiny things like chips or very large things like um, um, electrical um, producers. Industrial manufacturing and systems engineering are the people who make things happen. They work in logistics. They figure out supply chains. You need to get the tomatoes from the farm to the warehouse, to the grocery store, to the consumer. You need to build a conveyor belt to move a product from one end of the factory to the other end. This is what an industrial engineer does. Industrial engineers also are in charge of 
the command center at NASA. They're not the aerospace engineers. They're not the people figuring out the computers, but they're the ones making sure that everything on that floor works appropriately. Engineering management includes um, management and then with a background of engineering, and that is available to our master's students. Material science and engineering is available at the master and PhD level, but within that department, we do have a minor in nuclear engineering. One of our other very popular uh, subjects is mechanical and aerospace engineering. And being located in the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area, there's lots and lots of opportunities for students to get internships and co-ops, job shadowing and jobs after graduation in all kinds of different companies like Bell Helicopter, Lockheed Martin, NASA, SpaceX, American Airlines, Boeing, that list is endless. The other really exciting thing about our college is that we do offer a lot of minors. The only department that you can't minor in something that's already offered in that department would be in the computer science and engineering because those are so closely related. But this gives students a lot of options to explore different things and bettering their skills for higher paid employment after graduation. Students can also get certificates along the way in getting their degrees. And we also find that this is important for students looking for jobs. So I will just go to the last page because I want to make sure that you know how to get a hold of me and my assistant director. And we'll be around to answer your questions when everyone else is done. So thank you very much and have a great night. Awesome, thank you. Before we hear from our last representative, just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Any questions about the college application process or um, any questions for our representatives um, here, we encourage you to include the school name. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from Lamar University. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I um, like pull my presentation up. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Okay. okay. Can y'all see it good? Yes, looks great. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, hi everybody. My name is Whitney. Um, I'm an admissions counselor at Lamar University. Um, if you haven't heard of Lamar University, it is a four-year institution um, in Beaumont, Texas. So um, if you've heard, if you know where Houston is, we're about an hour and a half away from Houston. Um, so we're right in the center of everything that needs to be going on. Um, so just a little bit about Lamar. Um, we have a 330 um, acre campus with more than 100 programs of study. Um, and then we also have students from over 50 different countries. So we have a very diverse campus. Um, we have about um, 1,298 students um, that work on campus. And then we also, um, we have about 19 fraternities and sororities that we have. Um, and then, but we have more than 160 student clubs and organizations. So um, that's something to consider definitely um, when you're considering a college. 64% um, of students receive financial assistance at Lamar. We provide need-based and um, as well as extra financial aid. So not just the need-based loans, but we also, um, we also have other types of loans that you are welcome for as well. Um, so we have about a 19 to 1 um, student to faculty ratio, so the classes aren't too big. You're still going to have that one-on-one -on -one with your professors, and that's what I like about Lamar is it's a pretty big campus, but you're still going to have that one-on-one -on -one with your professors, and you're still going to develop all those relationships that you need. So um, here's a little bit about our admissions. Um, we are test optional, so we don't require an SAT score or an ACT score. Um, we like to say for automatic admission, you need to be in the top 50% class of rank. Um, that way you're automatically accepted. Um, and so we'll also need, you know, high school academic transcript for the GPA. Um, so 
And then we also would need your, your dual credit hours and that way we can transfer all of that over. Um, so if you were to apply and say that your GPA wasn't high enough, um, there's called an application review requirement. So you can appeal that process and you can do a freshman appeal or a standardized test scores. So you can either um, take the test and send us your test scores or you can write and you can have a letter of recommendation sent in with an essay. And usually um, we look over that and a lot of times those appeals work just fine. So, um, so how to apply to Lamar? Um, you would need to complete an application at goapplytexas.org. Um, once you do that, you'll need to submit your high school transcripts. And then also if you have dual credit transcripts, make sure and submit those too so that all of that can be transferred over. Um, so the cost of attending Lamar. Um, so Lamar is a very affordable school and that's one thing that we like to definitely harp on because um, college is very expensive. Um, this is about the average tuition and fees, room, board, and then book supplies. Um, but also here's a QR scanner, I mean, QR code that you can scan right here so that you can average and kind of calculate what your actual tuition would be like. So if you want a more exact number, you could um, reach out and make sure that, you know, that's more ideal for your situation. And then... Um, this is our last slide, but um, we are actually having a really big event um, this weekend. It's called Cardinal Boo. It's a tour of the whole campus, as well as our academic showcase, along with all of our student organizations that will be there. Um, so here's the QR code if you'd like to look into that, and we would love to have you. And if you have any questions, my coworker, Maya, will be here to answer any of your questions. So I really appreciate y'all listening, and hopefully y'all come to Lamar. <laughs> Great, thank you. And all great information from all our representatives here. Um, we do have some time left. So at this time, we're gonna now pivot into our Q&A portion of this session. I invite all our representatives at this time to go ahead and turn on their cameras and to get ready to unmute themselves for our first question here, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the collar search process. And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented in. I would definitely say, make sure that you visit the campuses that you are seriously considering. Um, actually setting foot on campus and seeing what it's like for yourself and talking to the students and the faculty and the staff there is such a great way to get to know more about them. Um, it's great if your best friend is going there and you really trust them, but actually getting there and seeing it for yourself, I think is the best way you can make your own decision about if it's the right fit for you. Um, I really like the quote um, that college is a match to be made, not a prize to be won. Um, and so I think when you're out there and you're looking and exploring different colleges, it is not a one size fits all, but you will certainly find the right fit. So kind of branching off of what Tiffany was saying, explore your options. If you get the chance to visit or check out virtual opportunities or connect with current students, you will certainly find the right college fit. So again, college is a match to be made, not a prize to be won. I agree with my colleagues. I was. I would also add that you need to look at the environment in which the campus is situated. Is it in a big city? Is it in a smaller rural area? What kind of environment are you going to best be successful in? So I think that's also something that students forget about. But if you're used to being in a smaller community and you go to a large campus, are you ready to do that? Or if you're in a big city, are you ready to go to a small campus? So those are other options that you might want to think about. Um, agreed. I would say, in addition to that, to make sure that you're making the decision like for yourself to think about, is this where you want to be for the next four years or so of your life? Um, sometimes maybe as we're picking, like I know for me, you were thinking about where your friends are going and, you know, but make sure that you're making the decision for yourself um, because it's going to be really important down the line for you. Um, and then also I say make us work for it a little bit. Like we want to talk with you. So ask us the questions, you know, like 
really make a list and kind of cross-reference it between different colleges, you know, and get a really good feel for it and see if that's where you see yourself for sure. Uh, so great advice um, from everyone, especially as you're going through the college search process. Um, great advice from college admission representatives is always uh, really helpful. So thank you. Our next question here is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I would say, uh, for me, especially coming from a very small uh, school, I didn't know anyone um, at UNT, but I felt very welcome. Even though we're a really, really large university, uh, it feels like home. And I think if you uh, come to campus, you'll see what I mean by that. But just the, uh, the diversity and the inclusiveness that uh, the campus has makes you really feel comfortable on campus. Yeah, I think for me, the big takeaway about Trinity would probably be that combination that we're able to offer of being like a small school with big resources um, and being able to have those really small class sizes, engage with your professors, but also be able to get incredible merit scholarships or do research or, you know, have these incredible resources at your disposal. That combination isn't very common. And so I would say that's probably the biggest takeaway, um, just being a small school with really big school resources. So I would say one thing I really appreciate about UTA is that we are rated number three in ethnic diversity for our undergraduate class, which I help think lends to being in the top 100 safest campuses in the US as well. So I'll share, I really like our like tagline. So a lot of times we'll on things, it says your moment is here. Um, so for us, I think it's so important that like, this is um, your starting place, you know? So like, we have a lot of opportunities for students to really get to know their professors and um, feel comfortable on the campus and learn and grow like as a person. So academically, but also uh, socially and all of that as well. So I think we really create that environment to help you become better, like well-rounded as a person. So. Great, I absolutely love that question um, because it truly uh, shows how unique um, each institution truly is. So um, that's really helpful. Um, and then our last question here is, what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? One thing um, that I would say, and I quote this from one of my colleagues, um, is we're admissions counselors, not denial counselors. So we are here to help you. And we want you to ask us those questions to figure out what the best path is for you to um, come to the institution you really want to come to. Um, maybe that's you're coming in as a freshman, maybe you need to go um, through a transfer path, but we really do want to help you. So please, please connect with us and ask us those questions. Yeah, actually, I was going to say something kind of similar to that about how this is a human process. I think sometimes the whole world of, of admission seems like it's very vague and mysterious and that there's a robot on the other side of the screen, like reading your application and making a decision. And it's like, no, it's us. We're on the other side of that. We are the ones reviewing your applications and making, making those decisions and thinking about you as, as a person and, and going off of what my colleague said, like being ready and willing to assist you as you're going through this process as well. Um, and so I definitely think that's a huge myth that there's not a human element to how we review applications, but there certainly is. And I think that's why a lot of us are in this industry is to build those human relationships and help students find the right fit. I, I think there's a myth that college is impossible to get into. It is possible. You just have to put the effort into it. You have to talk to us, tell us what your dreams and aspirations are, and we'll do everything we can to help you find that path so you can end up being the kind of person doing the perfect job that you've always envisioned. Yeah, um, not to be repetitive, but I agree with all of that. <laughs> I think a lot of times we get kind of like, we feel on the other side of the screen, you know, like as a student, I can remember feeling like, oh, like I have no idea, uh, but we want you to succeed, you know, like we want you to do well. I literally become so invested in my students. Like I'm texting them, you know, did you get this in? Like, so we are human and we want y'all, um, if our school is the right fit for you, we want to help you like get there. So for sure. 
Awesome. Thank you so much to all our representatives. Um, what a great Q&A. Um, everyone here is, um, a, here is a resource. And um, this time, um, especially more than ever, is um, one that's a lot going on. But again, um, everyone is here to help. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. So again, thank you to our representatives for being here. We appreciate your time. And thank you to each of you for joining us. As we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is greatly appreciated. This is one of many college presentations being offered. Um, so feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. There are more upcoming, so feel free uh, to register and sign up. And lastly, this session is being recorded. Um, all our sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. Again, thank you all and have a great night.